Hey, so in the studio, um, just beating up a Logic project, and this is Logic 10.47. So I just want to talk a little bit about the dynamic um, plugin load, which I think has been since version 4.5. So this will essentially just choose the plugins that were being used in the track. So that means any tracks that don't have any regions or audio, they basically will not be loaded. So when you're just kind of noodling and you're trying out about 50 different sounds and you leave them all on there, it doesn't actually load those, it just loads the ones that will enable the song to play. So this is great and really, really speeds up load times. I've put about 70 plugins on this and you can see we're whizzing through everything. This is also the 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro 8 core. There you go, speedy Gonzalez. There's my window with loads and loads of plugins there. So anyway, I wanted to talk today about, let's just clear that window, about um, using the touch bar as a kind of way to shortcut logic, but also a way to kind of play it like a musical instrument, because I think it's got some really novel aspects, which is very different from playing a keyboard or playing the old Apple K keyboard, which was great. Anyway, bye bye. On with the new. So yeah, touch bar. Let's just load a new software instrument there. So we've got the classic piano, the default, and immediately we can see we've got, you know, just the basics, level, bass and treble, just the basics to change the sound around. And it's all kind of readily automated for you, so you don't have to actually set up connections as you would. I think I did another video about that if you're using third party keyboard. This is great when you're kind of touring and stuff. So anyway, let's move on to another sound. And oh, let me just show you as well. This is when it loads a plugin that was empty. So this was just my machine plugin was set up. So I'm just showing that then it will load as you activate the track. So if you touch the track. So let's go to a nice square sound. So even if they're not Logic plugins, a lot of us use third party things. There's a selection of the controls for the plugins on the channel strip. So let's show you the other keyboard. So we've got a little keyboard that we hit here and there's no latency at all. It's just immediate and I haven't even got low latency mode on, which I often do even if I'm just triggering MIDI. So some real improvements there. So I'm just gonna scale up a little bit. And I love the way you can just kind of slide across the notes in a way that's quite different with the piano. I think it sounds really cool on um, electronic sounds. So I'm actually just gonna put an arpeggiator as well. So one of the immediate effects that you can just tap into is Logic's arpeggiator. So. so very quickly, you kind of develop something pretty cool. This song is in D minor, and one of the best things is, even if you don't play or know your scales, even though you should, <laughs> next to the arpeggiator, we've got scale. And at the moment, I'm in the minor pentatonic of D, so obviously you can change that. You can also access, well, some of the really kind of complex scales. So this is a really good way to just kind of get used to how they sound. Maybe you might want to use them, you know, like Lydian, Dorian, some that I can't pronounce. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I've chosen the correct one to, to fit the key of the song. So obviously you've started a Logic document, you've started it in the right key. Um, it's really easy now to just have access to that scale. And once you select the scale, you can see here, it's just chosen all the notes that are gonna work in the key of my song, which is just fabulous. And I actually love how that sounds. So let's have a little bit of that kind of added in the song and see what happens. Thank you. 